Hello Stampin' Friends, it's Stamp Ventures with Shauna. Welcome to my uh, Tuesday tutorial on Tuesday, June 6th at 9.06 p.m. I am late, late, late. Ah, I had technical difficulties. So I turned on my cell phone and because I always do these live videos with my phone and I had it all ready to put it in the mount and had the description of the video and my phone would not accept or Facebook would not accept that it was turning the, the phone sideways and it kept on with the mm, portrait the portrait angle even though uh, yeah something was really really goofy so like I kind of had to like shut Facebook right down and start all over again <sighs> okay so well here we go I'm here anyways and I made it and um, yeah hopefully there won't be too many more glitches as we go tonight and I have a Christmas card for you and I'm gonna have um, some suggestions and tips on making this card as fast as possible because um, this is going to be one of my 12 months of Christmas cards and I'm going to be making a bunch of them so stay tuned and I'll give you some tips for that in just a minute and um, as you can see I've got my funny here I can't remember who shared this on their Facebook page but just what all you want to do is finish your craft project but you're getting constantly interrupted <laughs> and I know none of you can uh, associate with that right you just get through everything just in a breeze ah <laughs> uh, yes there we go okay and I do have oh my goodness I have a weather report today a friend of mine who goes down to Arizona almost every winter posted that our temperature here in Moose Jaw Saskatchewan is the same temperature it got up to the same temperature as it did in Mesa Arizona today just unbelievably hot for early June so um, today's weather is smoking <laughs> we got up to 35 degrees Celsius here and for those of you who are in Fahrenheit land that's 95 degrees Fahrenheit so that's I mean we will occasionally get to that but usually in July and so yeah we've just had the air conditioning going like crazy here and yesterday was almost as hot so today's weather is brought to you by he's all that because holy smokes it was hot today so yes the weather is smoking okay um, I'm gonna get going here with some quick tips to help you get through a project like this as fast as possible and make a bunch of um, cards just realized for this I'm going to be using this edgelet die and I'm like ooh, I hope this die is still in the catalog there's a set of what four or five um, dies that cut ed along the edges and I should just take a look and make sure that I'm um, not off track with that okay so that's it the basic borders yeah it's this this zigzag here the one that looks like it you know on Charlie Brown's t-shirt <laughs> yeah the Charlie Brown zigzag okay so basic borders in case you're wondering where that came from um, oh I should just mention one more thing before we get started um, there is a designer series paper sale on for the month of June um, there's 15% off all of these let's see that's two four six eight 10 12 13 packages of designer paper I was excited to see that even um, the hello irresistible which is an online exclusive paper is included in the sale packages so um, yeah lots of beautiful papers and if you're looking to order any let me know um, I'll be putting in an order in about well, six or so days uh, as I'll be closing up the orders from this class the class that I'm doing this week um, and uh, FYI all of the host rewards are going to the Humane Society here in Moose Jaw um, they create tags and cards um, to make um, things for people who have lost their pets and um, uh, a dear Stampin' Friend Iris was supposed to be receiving the host rewards this month and then, um, unfortunately Iris passed away last month so I'm happy 
well, not happy, but I am honored to say that we're going to be, you know, supporting our community and thinking of Iris when we place our next order. So if you're interested in any of the designer paper that's on sale or any of um, anything else that's currently in the catalog or in the online exclusives or even in the clearance rack, just let me know and I'll add your things to the order. Okay, so first thing about this card, you know what, just before I do that, I'm going to just stop and see if there are any questions or comments that have come through. None yet. Well, if you get a chance, give us a wave, say hello, let us know if you're there, and I'll go back to the comments in a little bit. So I don't have any current Christmas paper. Um, guess what? There is some Christmas paper that demonstrators can now order. Um, it's a it's an online exclusive pre-order time for demonstrators and so I'm going to grab some of that paper while I can. Uh, customers will be able to order it starting next month in the online exclusives. Not this paper but some other paper. Um, and if you're interested at all in checking out the demonstrator starter kit um, you would be able to add the new Christmas paper onto your starter kit right now. And it's not just paper, there are other things as well. I'm excited to get some of them and try them out. But, um, so I went and dug back into my Christmas paper from last fall, and I found I still had a nice full sheet of the gnome paper. That's all I can think of to call it, gnome. The storybook gnomes. And um, I thought, yeah, the snowflakes are great for a mitten-themed card. But I want to get as many cards as I can out of this. And my idea for today's card came from a kit. A kit for, that was like from way back in, oh, I don't know, like maybe 20, 2010 or 2011. I, I'm not sure how long ago this um, paper pumpkin kit goes back to, maybe it says on the side of the box. Oh, no, no, it doesn't. It doesn't say a date on the side of the box. But it was the mistletoe and holly paper pumpkin kit. And, well, I liked both of the ideas. I thought they were both nice and doable ideas. And originally I was thinking of, oh, okay, I could cut my a square piece and put my um, mitten there. But then I decided, no, I could have my mitten hanging and tied up like it's hanging up to dry. And so then I looked here and I'm like, oh, there's like a design there, like designer paper. And so what do I have? I found this. Um, but then I decided I want to get as many cards as I can from this. So I'm going to be cutting it four inches wide and five and a half inches tall. So I'm taking a little bit of a tweak and adjustment on the normal card size. Normally the card front would be five and a half by four and a quarter and I'm going to do it five and a half by four to be able to get more cards. So my goal is to get six cards done for this month for my pile of Christmas cards that I'm working on. My hashtag 12 months of Christmas. So this would be the first thing is to cut this and so I'm cutting it every four inches. Make sure I'm lined up square. There we go. Four inches and four inches. And many of you already know this, but with designer paper, because it's a little bit less heavy than the cardstock, you can turn it sideways and go, um, you can double it up when you um, go to do the next cut when you turn it sideways and then you can cut two pieces at a time. So there's five and a half inches. That's two card fronts, five and a half inches. There's four card fronts and I can move or remove this out of the way. Pretty good, not much waste left from the paper here. And then I've got two more here to get my I hope I said six. I didn't say eight, did I? I meant to say six. Six cards, six card fronts <laughs> from this 12 by 12 sheet of paper. There we go. 
So there's a start. I'm not going to make them all tonight, but I'm going to show you some things that are going to help me to get them made just a little bit more quickly. Next thing, since I've got six card fronts, I'm going to need six card bases. And so here I've got um, three sheets of the Thick Whisper White. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do my scoring. And you, I think, have heard me say that often. That if you score first, then you only have to cut once. So if you cut first, then you have to usually score twice. And instead of scoring at four and a quarter, I'm going to score at four, which is like weird, but that's because I'm making it just a little bit smaller. There we go. And you know what? While I'm here, I'll tuck away my scoring blade and I'll pull out my cutting blade and I'm going to cut off this edge at eight. So there's a half inch paper. You can throw, throw it in your bin for making little labels for cards, or you can recycle it, whichever you think it's going to get um, the most, most work out of it for you. And then again, here we go. Now I got to move the cutting blade out of the way. Score once and cut once the long way at eight inches. I'm almost done the bases for six cards. Score at four inches. Oops, glad I said score because there I am getting ready to pull up that and cut at eight inches. And where is, there's my eight inch mark. Oh, okay. And so now I can just go in and Cut the other way, which would make it the five and a half inch tall card. So there's two and four and six. So it doesn't have to take you like all week. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I just must have nicked my finger underneath the paper trimmer and I don't I, I, I don't think it's going to bleed too much <laughs> oh dear okay what next hopefully I won't keep you getting blood on the card so we've got six card bases and we've got six card um, DSP panels for the card fronts and now looking back at the card here there is um, a darker blue in the original paper, I'm pretty sure that that darker blue was Pacific Point. Um, I used almost all my Pacific Point up for a game that I did with my um, Stampin' team. So I started looking through all the papers and um, they brought Blueberry Bushel back this um, for this newest annual catalog and the Blueberry Bushel, bushel is really close and the neat thing about the paper is like it's not a solid none of these are solid blues there's different differing tones in darks and lightnesses and so the blueberry bushel works really well so um, I want a two and a quarter inch piece that's two and a quarter inch wide and a four and a quarter inch long and I love the four and a quarter inch mark because that is such a great use of the paper because it's right halfway down the long way here so I find my four and a quarter inches and there we go now I said two and a quarter across and we'll see how many we can get this way here see I should be able to do the math and go you know, two and a quarter, four. And, oh, anyways, we'll just do it like this. There's one. So we're using the paper to the best that I can. Two. Three. Oh, okay. We can get four out of the one half. And then this piece is a little bit too small, so it'll go in my scrap bin. And then I need two more. Five, six. 
So what I can do is I could do subtraction math this way. Ooh, look at me doing math. Four and a half and two and a quarter. So there's piece five and piece six. And these two I can tuck away for something else. Okay. Ooh, nope, not dropping too much blood here. That's good. Okay. Whew. Now, as you can see, a pile is growing and um, pretty soon it'll just be all assembling. This piece here starts out as two inches wide, so just a quarter of an inch smaller than the blue, and it starts out the same length, four and a quarter inches. But here's something I discovered. This piece, this basic borders die, is exactly like almost exactly six inches long. So I took a piece of paper, basic white, and you can see six inches. And so I cut it six inches the long way and I cut it four and a quarter the other way. And I'll double check that. I'm pretty sure it's yes, four and a quarter by six inches. And so here's the cool thing. You can take and put those, are they zigs or are they zags? The ones at the bottom. You line up the very bottom tips of the zigzags along like that. And you run it through the big shot and the big shot, you know, or the stamping cut and emboss machine or whatever die cutting machine you have. And ta-da you get a piece like this so you only run it through the machine once but from that running it through the one time you're going to cut it at two inches and two inches and that leaves you with two inches there's two four six look at one time through the machine and three pieces to contribute to your put together pile. Okay, so I'd only do that one more time and basically I have all my pieces ready to go for this card and I'll do, I'll put together one of the cards, um, show you one other tip that I found to help me get the, um, the thread, the linen thread on fairly quickly and then I can work on the rest here and add to my stash, my 12 months of Christmas stash. I am amazed at how far I'm ahead of the game I'm going to be this year. So, okay, I'm going to start with my stamping right off. We'll get that out of the road and then I'll put the rest of the card together. Um, let's see, just checking to see if any questions have come through. Ah, there we go. Okay, I'm not sure why I couldn't see anything like um, there earlier, but it's showing up now. Hello, Glenda and Inez and Brenda and the others who have hopped on. Thanks for stopping by to check out what I'm doing today. It seems absolutely crazy that I'm making Christmas cards on the hottest day of the year, but here we are. And maybe this is gonna help me mentally stay cool on these hot, hot days. Inez, you asked if I have a kit like this left. Um, no, I mean, I have a few little pieces in this one, but um, uh, this was just, um, yeah, I liked this kit. And after I was done making it, I like, I wanna save these ideas. And it's great sometimes to go back to the kits for inspiration. Okay, so I've got the Celebrate with Tags cling stamp set and I just realized hmm, did I put the stickers on no I didn't put the stickers on my stamps yet I'm going to do that someday and I'll start with stamping the bee jolly across there and so I'm using the blueberry bushel ink which coordinates with the blueberry bushel um, cardstock and you know, it's always a good idea to grab a scrap paper and just see if you're holding, because I don't have, <laughs> I don't have the, uh, the sticker on it. I might as well know if I am stamping it even in the right direction. Like who knows, maybe I've got it upside down. So it's always good to do a check it out and see stamp. Okay. 
that's the right direction. Good to know. So I'll do that again. Ink it up. Get a nice layer of all the beautiful droplets of ink. And center it along sort of a bottom-ish. And I take my time, especially because this is putting down a thick, full layer of ink. Oh, beautiful. Oh, I really love how the red rubber stamps so evenly. Okay, I'm going to close this up so I don't accidentally dip into it because for my mitten, I'm going to be using the balmy blue ink. You're going to notice, you'll, you might notice something about my mitten, and I don't know if you can see it from here, but there's a little pucker in the rubber. And I have already phoned Stampin' Up! about it. And they're sending me a new stamp set so that when I stamp the mitten in the future, it won't pucker. But I don't have my replacement one yet, so I'll just show you with this one and you'll get the right idea. So I'm going to stamp the mitten sort of halfway between the top and the words. And let all that ink make contact. And there we go. There. And you can see where that pucker is or crease in the rubber. It creates a defect in the mitten when it's stamped. So Stampin' Up! was very good about replacing that for me. Now, here's another quick tip. Um, hmm. I, um, I think on the instructions here, they only had the twine going around the white piece. I think I'm going to have the twine going around both because I did that last time and I think it worked out okay. So I'm going to quickly glue these two pieces together. You can see even though they both started at four and a quarter inches in length, once you cut the zigzag off the bottom of the white, then it makes it just the right length to layer onto the blue, which was also cut at four and a quarters, four and a quarter in length. There we go. Now, um, quick tip. Sometimes you just need to fake it till you make it and make it quick. So grab some scotch tape and I'm going to tape that and hold it there. And I'm going to go around one, two, there we go. No waste. Going to trim it off like that and grab another piece of tape to hold down this end. And I don't even know what it looks like on the front, but I will. Oop. Okay, I don't need that to go over the edge there. Um, now I can go to the front and I can maneuver these guys up and down a little. Might pull this up with my fingernail, get it to cross a little bit over more in the middle of the mitten. So we can maneuver it a little bit. There we go. All right. And now I'm ready to put a bow at the top and make that mitten look like it's hanging and drying after a fun day in the snow. Snow, I, I know, snow, it's a four-letter word. I really shouldn't say that. Okay. Um, but, yeah. Um, yes, here we are, hot day of the year, and I said that word. It seems so weird, like, how our country can be, like, plus 35 one day and you know, two months ago it was minus 35. It's just crazy. Well, maybe three months ago. I don't know, but it's, it's a lot. Okay, so I'm going to glue dot this bow right onto the twine. So it looks like it's tied to it, but it's not really. Like I said, fake it till you make it. And... My glue dots bunched up a little bit, but that's okay because ooh, got a little piece of fuzz that was on the way there. Um, but bunched up, it'll um, hide and tuck in behind the the center of the bow a little bit. 
there like that okay and so I've got my card which you know is eight inches by five and a half and it's scored at four so it's a little bit narrower than a normal card but it still will fit nicely into our um, medium sized whisper weight envelopes and here we go goodbye little gnome houses or mushrooms or whatever you are I mean, the gnome houses maybe would make more sense for a hot day. Well, mind you, you usually get mushrooms growing in your garden when you've had lots of rain. So I think it's been too hot for mushrooms lately. Anyways, four inch by five and a half inch piece of designer paper on the front. A nice, clean, clean edge. There's, it doesn't look like there's any layers. Well, there is a layer, of course, but it, doesn't look like it. And then um, I'm going to grab my dimensionals. One of the things I use almost more than anything else. You know, really my liquid glue and my dimensionals are probably the hardest working things that I have here. Um, maybe besides my paper trimmer and paper itself. But uh, yeah, that's it. So just a reminder that, you know, if you're doing batches of cards, think about how you're using your paper, what you're going to get the most out of. Um, and, you know, a little tip like maybe when you've got a border, if you can, you know, cut six inches and then divide it into two inch segments, it's only one pass through the machine instead of three passes. Um, yeah, and, you know little idea too like uh, taping the backs with uh, the twine or tape um, or ribbon with scotch tape and then that'll get you done you know any way any way you can think of a little um, yeah just little things to cut short that shortens your time and helps you to get it done and then still be able to go out and enjoy our summer here and hopefully <laughs> stay cool not get too wiped by the heat that's out there today so okay i'm just taking one last look and um glenda could be just be the seam where the thumb is attached to the mitten um actually uh, that's a, that's a good point um when i look at the catalog though um there isn't any mark there and then um, the way um, how to explain it it's uh, it it takes off and goes into towards the snowflake and it goes off in this direction and then it's it's like there was a little pucker or something in the um, in the rubber so yeah it almost could seem like it's where the two of them meet but um, when you look in the catalog uh, it doesn't show that on the on the pictures on the samples in the catalog so um, yeah I'm pretty sure it's it's a little bit of a defect um, when they were pouring the rubber the rubber wasn't I think it's sort of liquidy to begin with and then it sets and it just must have you know had a had a little fold in it or something there but that's a good point and you know what if I keep the cards like if I, if I hold it up really close <laughs> you can probably see something's going on there but if it's back a little bit further yeah you don't notice it as much so um yeah all right well thanks so much for joining me on this hot day for some cool cards and um, if you have any questions, please do give me a shout. I'll do my best to help you with whatever project you're working on and, um, have a great week, everyone. Talk to you another time. Bye for now.